Hi everyone, it's George here. If you were watching the last video, you will know Ralph was talking. So this time, we thought we would let Ralph introduce the video. Hello everyone, welcome to the Civilian Room. This time Steve and George will be controlling my nut. It will be a fun ride, so let's get into it. So what we're going to be doing this time is actually trying to get the mouth moving in time with the um, sound of the speech. Um, in the last video we, we got the speech working, the sound, but the jaw wasn't moving. Um, I've got to say thanks to Greg over at My Robot Lab for uh, quickly helping me out, sort out my problem. After I moved to the Raspberry Pi, um, none of my servos would work. And... Greg took a quick look and said that I just needed to um, put the latest version of the MRL COM on the Arduinos. I think what happened is when I was uh, previously using Windows, I was on Manticore, and then when I switched to the Raspberry Pi, I decided to switch to Nixie and forgot to update the MRL COM, so that was a little bit out of date. Um, I swapped that out and things started to work, so, so that was great. So let's take a look at how we can get this mouth control service working. So if I just CD into the MRL directory, that's just where I've stored my robot lab. You can see I've created this start file. You can see it up there in the top right in green. If we just take a quick look at that. So in here I've got Java dash jar my robot lab dot jar and then this bit at the end I've got dash m 2g that's just to allocate a little bit more memory so that dash m stands for memory and we're giving it 2 gig because I was finding that the Mary speech service was running out of RAM so I've just put this inside this start file so I don't have to keep remembering this and typing this out all the time I can now just run the start program and we'll probably expand on that a little bit in the future as well, put some more stuff in there. So if I just run dot slash start, that should start my robot lab. And there it goes. It'll take a few seconds. Now this is Nixie that we're running here um, and it starts up both GUIs so it starts up the web GUI and the swing GUI. I'm just going to close the web GUI for now. We will look at that in the future but for now I'm just going to stick with the swing GUI. I'm just going to maximize the window because I'm finding that somewhere in my robot lab it keeps expanding the size of the window and it goes beyond the size of my screen and things get a little bit awkward. I can solve that by just maximizing the window. I just thought I'd point out here that every time you start up my robot lab, it gives this instance a unique name. It's kind of a random name that they come up with. And I think that's possibly something to do with the fact you can run multiple instances of my robot lab and each one would have its own unique name and they can actually talk to each other. So that'll be an interesting thing to play around with in the future. But now if you go to Python, you can see I've put all the work I've done so far in one file. I've got it um, stored here in complete.py, so if we open that up. Now I'm not going to go through the entire file today because um, there's a lot of stuff in there that we're not interested in today. We're only really interested in the Mary Speech service. So I'll just point out a, a few parts. You can see here I'm defining some serial ports. Now I'm on the Raspberry Pi now, so my ports look a little bit different rather than being like com3 or com5 they're now forward slash dev forward slash tty usb0 i'm only defining the right port um, i'm not using the other two uh, right now so i've just left them blank you can see here i've got a load of um, notes really they're just comments they don't do anything i've just put them here so that um, when i need to remember one of these numbers it's right here in front of me in the future, I probably will turn this into some kind of configuration file. You can see here I'm defining my Arduinos, and the one we're actually interested in today is the right controller. 
So I'm just doing a, a runtime.start to start um, an Arduino service. I'm just calling it right controller. And then you can see here, we're also interested in the jaw today. So again, I'm just doing runtime.start and starting up a servo service. So that's just simply a, a servo service, nothing special about it, just giving it the name jaw. And then this is the part that we're really interested in today. So the first thing I'm doing is another runtime.start to start a Mary speech service. I'm just setting the voice to spike. You can actually um, choose several different voices and they're all pre-installed now in Nixie so there's no extra steps to install the voices. They're all just there and they're super easy to use. You just set them by their name and off you go. It's uh, really nice. Then we've got the mouth control service. So again, another runtime.start and I'm starting with a service called mouth control. And this is really the, the key to all of this today. Mouth control is doing all the work here. Now, a couple of things that you need to do is to make sure you set the mouth closed POS and the mouth opened POS. They're two integers that define the open and closed positions of the mouth, the jaw servo. So it's important that they're correct. Um, they do default to some small values that might not be suitable for your servo. You just need to be careful that you don't accidentally use the defaults and do some damage to your robot. Now the mouth control service is what coordinates the speech service and the jaw service. So we need to sort of wire things up now, connect things together. So next up we have this attach method. Now the attach method actually takes any attachable service, um, although it will just ignore things that it's not interested in. So both the servo service and the Mary speech service are both instances of attachable services. So they can both be passed into this method. So if you pass in an instance of a speech synthesis service, it will know that that's the speech service and it will subscribe to a couple of uh, events that a speech synthesis service would be publishing. Um, notably the publish start speaking and publish end speaking events. So it can then listen for those and when they occur, it can take action. If, however, you pass in an instance of a servo control service, it will know that that's the jaw servo and it just keeps a reference to it so that when it does receive those events, it can take action and move the jaw to the position, those, those open and closed positions that we defined earlier. And that is literally it. It is that simple. So the mouth control service is now listening for those published events and when they occur, it will move the jaw accordingly. So all you need to do now is just interact with your speech service as you normally would, ask it to speak phrases and the mouth control service will handle all the movement of the jaw. So I'll just get everything ready so that we can have a play around here. So we can see all the services starting up at the top in the tabs. So next if I open up my speech script, my speak.py script, if we take a look at that. So the first thing I'm doing here is calling the attach head method. Um, that's just a little function that I've defined myself in the complete.py script. And that's just attaching all the servos in the head, like the eyes, the neck and the jaw. So I'm just calling that to make sure that the jaw is actually attached and ready to move. Next I'm doing mouth equals runtime dot get service Mary speech. So I'm just grabbing a copy of the Mary speech service and putting it in the mouth variable. Then I'm calling this mouth dot speak method. Now this is a non blocking method. So this function will actually execute and then the script will continue to run immediately. It won't stop and wait for the words to be spoken. So then it will call another uh, mouth dot speak and then finally it will print the word finished. And if we run this, we should see the word finished is actually printed quite quickly. And then we'll probably hear the word spoken afterwards. 
So it just demonstrates that the speak method is not going to stop and wait. It's just going to continue executing the script immediately. So if we run this, we see we get the word finished quickly. This is an example of the speak method. See how the script finished before I had finished speaking. So you see the word finished appeared really quickly. Um, and then we heard the word spoken. So you could see that the speak methods are, are not stopping and waiting. The script is just continuing on immediately. Now, in contrast, if we have a look at the next script here called speakblocking.py. So again, I'm just doing the attach head and the mouth equals runtime.getService to so just grab the service. And this time you'll see I'm calling this speak blocking method. Now the difference here is this is actually a blocking method as the name implies. And this will actually stop and wait for the words to be spoken before it continues to execute the next statement. And it will do the same again with this one. Um, it won't, uh, it will wait this time. And then finally, we've got the print at the bottom. So if we run that. This is an example of the speak blocking method. See how the script waits for me to finish speaking. And you see this time the word finish didn't appear until the words had been spoken. So you can see that the speak blocking method is actually holding up the script, causing it to wait a little bit to give the, the um, speech service time to actually speak the words before the next statement gets executed. So it gives us a couple of different ways to um, execute those speech methods, depending on if we want to wait or if we want to do other stuff. Next up, I'm going to show you there's a few um, variables that we can play around with or public properties on the uh, mouth control service. The first one we've got here is called delay time. This is actually a small delay that's programmed in every time the mouth control service comes across a vowel sounding letter. Now in the English language we have the letters A, E, I, O and U as the vowels, but it also includes a few more letters than that. Um, there's the letter Y for example which can sound like an I or an E. Um, and there's even some more letters. Um, looking in the source code it looks like they might be Russian, the Russian language. Now I don't speak Russian so I don't know but I'm guessing that they could be um, other letters that are vowel sounding. Next up we've got this uh, delay time stop. Now this is actually a small delay that's programmed in every time the mouth control service comes across um, the full stop character or the, or the dot. If we look back at this previous script you can see we've got one here at the end of the sentence and then another one here. That just allows us to play around with um, a bit of an extra delay at the end of a sentence because in natural speaking you normally have a bit of a pause at the end of a sentence so we can just play around with that. And then finally we've got this delay time letter. Now that's that's just used um, if we, we're not on a vowel letter or we're not on a full stop then it will fall back to this delay time letter. So any other letter will use this smaller delay here. You can see this is the smallest one out of the three. So we can just play around with these values. Um, you can see what I'm doing here is um, just setting them all and then I'm printing them all out. Now I'm only doing that just to verify they are indeed actually set to what I'm expecting them to be. So we can run that and just see that. And you see they are indeed all printed out at the bottom here in the output window. So I can just play around with those and just uh, fine tune the timing. So it's quite neat actually because you get quite a bit of control over what you can play around with. This is an example of the speak method. See how the script finished before I had finished speaking. This is an example of the speak method. See how the script finished before I had finished speaking. So this is with delay time letter set to 40.
This is an example of the speak method. See how the script finished before I had finished speaking. Yep, pretty happy with that. Okay, so now let's hear the final word from Ralph the MO robot. So that is all for now. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And we will see you in the next video.